We have some wide receiver depth chart battles to watch, especially the impact for fantasy football. Here to break it down, SI senior fantasy analyst, Michael Fabiano and Fabs. I got my eyes on Baltimore because they signed Sammy Watkins. They drafted Rashad Bateman in the first round, and they still have Marquise Hollywood Brown on the roster for the Ravens. But which one is the one to have for fantasy football? And you've also got Devin DuVernay, and you've got Miles Boykin, and you've got a team that doesn't throw the football. So uh, it's an interesting scenario, right? I mean, they have a glut of wide receivers, and let's also remember that Mark Andrews is maybe their most reliable receiver, uh, and he plays the tight end position. So looking back, uh, this Ravens team is one of six to run more than 1,000 snaps uh, with two or fewer wideouts on the field over the last two seasons. Uh, so I don't know that any of these receivers are going to make a consistent fantasy impact. One other point, no team in the league last year ran more 22 personnel than the Ravens. And if you know what 22 personnel means, it's two tight ends and two running backs, which means what? One wide receiver. That's not good either for any of these players. Uh, I, listen, Hollywood Brown's dealing with some injuries right now in camp. He hasn't really lived up to expectations. He'll be the first Ravens wide receiver drafted, but he's likely going to end up being a four or a five. And then you're going to see Bateman come in. Bateman maybe has the best ceiling of all three of these players. Uh, but once again, rookie wide receiver. Can he come in and make an impact that throws the football fewer than 50% of the time? Uh, unsure. Watkins has looked good in camp. He knows the offense of Greg Roman. In fact, he had his best fantasy season under Roman uh, when they were together in Buffalo. But the problem here with these three wide receivers, regardless who, of who ends up being the one, the two, and the three, there are not going to be enough targets for these three players to consistently put up very good numbers. Why? The Ravens run the football over 55% of the time last season. It's going to be nice for J.K. Dobbins, of course, for Lamar Jackson as well. Mark Andrews will see his. Uh, these three receivers could put up some good numbers from time to time. I just wouldn't trust them to be reliable. And to be honest with you, Bill, I haven't seen Watkins picked in a lot of these best ball uh, and mock drafts that I've done. If he is going, it's late in a best ball format. All right, let's stick with the AFC, but this time we'll go from the north to the east. And let's focus on the New York Jets. We know they have a new quarterback in rookie, Zach Wilson, a new number one wide receiver uh, with the free agent signing of Corey Davis. But let's take a look at Jameson Crowder versus their second round pick, Elijah Moore. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, Davis is set as the one. And right now it looks like Keelan Cole will be the two in terms of uh, the receiver who is lined out wide opposite of Corey Davis. Denzel Mims has been running with the threes during camp. That's probably not a good thing for him. So uh, we go to the slot position, and that is Crowder versus Elijah Moore. When Moore was drafted, a lot of folks, including myself, thought Crowder would end up getting cut. Uh, well, that didn't happen. The Jets retained him. And now you see a battle between these two players potentially emerging. But here's the good news. Elijah Moore has looked great in camp so far. I mean, he's been the talk of Jets camp, and he's gaining that rapport with Wilson. We like to see that. Here's some more good news. Moore's actually been lining up on the outside sometimes. So the last time the Jets had training camp practice with the ones, it was Davis it was Moore on the outside, and then it was Crowder in the slot. Now, Moore played predominantly in the slot during his time at Old Miss. Let's put it that way. He actually ran just 8.4% of his college snaps out wide, but he can do it. So if the Jets decide that they're going to utilize him both on the inside and the outside, that means more opportunities for Moore uh, and potentially more fantasy points as well. I don't love any of these Jets wide receivers. I think Corey Davis is clearly the best as a wide receiver four from a fantasy perspective. But when I take a shot on Elijah at some point in the late rounds as a five or certainly in best ball, absolutely. Uh, this Jets team has had a lot of changes. I still don't think they're going to be very good. That means they're going to have to throw the football quite a bit. And if Moore becomes the top option there behind Davis for Zach Wilson, uh, we could see a kid come out there and maybe give you 60 catches, 700 to 800 yards, and maybe five to six touchdowns in his first season. But keep tabs on that slot position battle. If Moore ends up getting more work on the outside, that means more value for the rookie. All right, so that was some of our wide receiver battles to watch during training camp. We have quarterbacks, running backs, tight ends. It's all up on Sports Illustrated, and we have you covered when it comes to getting ready for your fantasy draft, check everything out. Go to si.com slash fantasy.